Darren Gange here with my good buddy Sean Cole for SRT, Inside Sim Racing. And uh, we're here to do the long-awaited Porsche 911 Turbo review. People have been waiting forever for this review. Yeah, no doubt. From Fanatic. Here's a little look-see of it. Sean will hold it. Great here's looking the, wheel. Uh, here's the pedal unit. And uh, this thing's been out for a few months now. It's been out for about, I don't know, about six months, I would say. They, they actually sent out some some wheels for people to beta test. Sent them out to everybody, or not everybody, but all over the world and people are getting them. Anybody that signed up for it and they uh, uh, submitted feedback and the guys at Fanatic made some adjustments to that wheel based on that feedback. We had one of those wheels. Yeah, early prototype. Yeah, and this is compatible for the uh, PlayStation 3 and the PC. And we did testing in what? Just about every sim. Yeah. And like you said, the it's got lights that come on in the numbers or the buttons, and it switches from PlayStation to PC mode. Yep. Uh, on uh, the PlayStation 3, tried it in Gran Turismo 5. Comes with a six-speed shifter, gate shifter, and uh, we were able to use the clutch and the six-speed shifter in Gran Turismo 5. So all you Gran Turismo lovers out there. Actually, didn't you have to do a little work on this in order to make it work Gran Turismo? Yes, yeah, what is this, Sean? This is... Tell everybody what that is. <laughs> this is a dongle, for those of you who don't know. Sean it's, likes to say dongle. <laughs> it's a fun word to say. Uh, basically, it's, it is a wireless wheel. I think we didn't mention that. And this is your little uh, receiver. There's a transmitter inside of the wheel, so it communicates via wireless to the computer. And it's and wireless. Uh, it can be almost completely wireless. We keep saying that, but you got to plug it in for it to work. The pedals can be operated by battery, or there's like an S video type. This is one of my gripes about this wheel. It's got this S video type connection, and it's just basically like an S video cable. And it, you know those pins are very delicate, but um, you know once they're secure, you don't have to worry about it. And that's the way to run it without battery power. Uh, you run it with the S video cable, and it takes the power right from the wheel. So anyway, uh, it's got hardware settings on the wheel. You can adjust force feedback, sensitivity from 180 degrees, 360, full 900 degrees of rotation. Why don't you show them that, Sean, the 900 degrees. Right there, and yeah, look at this. And, and I don't know if you can hear, I've got my microphone right there. So if this was a loud weird wheel, you would be hearing a lot of noise. It's very, very quiet. Belt and, driven, yeah. three force feedback motors, I believe. Uh, there's also like a rumble motor that you can uh, set to do different things. Also, you can do an R-Factor plug-in to where that little display will read out like gear shift, uh, speed, all sorts of cool stuff. Actually, I didn't get to work in Vista. It's, it's still a beta plug-in, but uh, speaking of Vista, well, one other thing before we go into the review, uh, I had some compatibility issues. We'll talk about that in, in, uh, in the review, but that's really one of my only complaints about the wheel. But Sean and I really enjoyed uh, reviewing this thing. And yeah, I think let's go ahead and just start breaking it down by the categories. We'll give some final thoughts at the end. Sounds good. Kick your brain into high gear as you travel the globe solving incredible mind-bending puzzles. Tinker with tons of gadgets and create the chain reactions you need to succeed. Unlock a 3D world that the entire family can enjoy. Crazy Machines 2, now available at Amazon.com for $14.99 for the PC, rated E for everyone. All right, well, uh, like we said, we're going to put it through our, uh, our rating scale. First category is wheel. You know, we basically look at how, you know, how the buttons are configured, you know, the type of wrap that it's got, you know, the way it, uh, it looks, and uh, we both gave it a pretty high rating. Uh, I gave it a 90, and, and so did Sean, so we both, uh, we both liked it a lot. And Sean, why don't you tell me, I mean, you've got it now uh, attached to your rig permanently. Yeah, I've been doing quite a bit of racing with this, and there are a few things that right off the bat, and this is in the category of wheel, is that it feels like a real car wheel, more yep. so than anything on the sim world that I've ever used. Just feels like a wheel in your hand, feels like it. Thickest grip for a, a, a sim wheel out there yeah. uh, for this at this price point and below. Lots of good buttons in good locations. Uh, the buttons, actually, I'd like them to seal a little better so there's a little room for improvement. That's why it's not 100. Directional button, that's kind of nice. No paddle shifters in terms of actual paddles, but you do have paddle buttons. Uh, which is also included in the wheel. So, I mean, a very, very nice wheel. Like you said, the, the leather stitched uh, leather, uh, very nice. Yeah, it's hand stitched, yeah. So, both of us give it 90s uh, on the wheel. So, and that leads us to pedals, uh, which we have sitting right here. Uh, definitely one of the weak points, I would say. Not bad, not as bad, not as bad as the beta pedals. They, they definitely made improvements on these, on these pedals. 
Uh, definitely flimsier than, say, a G25, and we're definitely comparing this to a G25. Um, my gripe about the pedals, the, the not enough spring, or it's too springy. It needs to be stiffer on the, on the accelerator, uh, just so I can have a little bit more progressive feel on the pedal. But you get used to it. I ended up just hanging my foot off the edge. Uh, the brake has a decent progressive feel. Uh, again, it could be better, it could be worse. I mean, I, I could definitely race with this. And the clutch has a nice, I like it, it's got a nice clutchy yeah. It definitely you know, feels like a clutch. A uh, thing I've noticed about the pedals myself is originally, or lately, I've been driving in shoes and a lot of the newer pedals have a lot more spring tension and I've been using shoes to drive. These actually have less tension and I went back to wearing socks or just barefoot driving. And that's because there's very little spring in that gas pedal. The other thing to notice is the, the gas pedal's mounted at the floor. It's very much a Porsche. This is all Porsche looking stuff included in the pedals there. You know, one thing uh, Fedanik told me, this is the only item that you can buy outside of, the, of a Porsche dealership or from Porsche. This is the only item that has the Porsche licensing that, can, that is being sold outside of, you know, yeah somewhere that, that most of Porsche stuff is being sold. But another thing about the pedals comes with a metal plate, which we don't have sitting right here. We can show you a close up of it, but makes it great for mounting it to yeah. stuff, add some weight to it. Took me minutes to mount it into my pod. I mean, these guys thought about everything. This thing has Velcro on the bottom here, so you could just Velcro it to things. Got some nice rubber stops. Again, it's uh, uh, battery operated, so you can be wireless. Good for PlayStation guys. The other um, thing I'll, I'll point out is, all three pedals had distinctly different feels to them. The gas pedal had a very light touch, brake pedal had more tension, a little bit of a progressive feel, and the clutch had that very clutchy rebound to it. Yep. Uh, do we give numbers? Do we score that? 85. 85 across the board, both of us. Yep, both of us gave us 85. So next that leads, leads us to construction and durability. And durability, we're not really sure. We didn't get to run it that much, but we're, we're going to know because yeah. we're, we're definitely putting this thing through its paces. We're going to continue to. Speaking of which, live for speed, iRacing, Arca, R Factor, all the Sims, GTR Evolution, all of them feel great. This is, we'll talk about force feedback in a little bit, but God, what a great feeling this wheel has. Yeah, but you know, in the construction durability though, I mean, very, very nicely fitting case. Little vents here, but there's nothing sticking out. There's all the, the seams were very nice. I mean, it, I, I got a feeling this thing's gonna be pretty durable. I think the, the problem may be with these pedals, but not gonna know until we go long term on it. Um, but uh, construction and durability, uh, I gave it an 85, Sean gave it a 90. All right, well next that leads us to plug and play ability. And why don't you tell them about yours? And uh, I'll tell them about mine. There's, you know, again, let's get back to the dongle. Uh, the dongle, and it has a memory chip. The memory chip supposedly has all the drivers. One gigabyte memory stick that it comes with. Yeah, and it looks like a Porsche key, that's cool. Don't use these drivers. Go to the website, download the latest drivers. Actually, the updater I tried to use doesn't even work. It says yeah. server not found. It, it, the, what's on, the, on the, uh, the memory stick is supposed to be the drivers, like Sean said, but it's, it's just this updater that doesn't even work. So go to fanatic.com, go to the support page, PC uh, wheel, and then you can get the, uh, the flash for Gran Turismo if you're a PC, PS3 owner, and uh, get the latest driver. Yeah, so you actually get two. One that is the transmitter receiver, one that was the memory. Uh, but, you know, one strike against it right there. You had to go get an extra file. There are a couple extra steps. You got to synchronize or, or sync the, the wheel to the dongle and then the, the pedals to the wheel. And there are a couple steps. I mean, it went... Binded is what it's calling it. Yeah. That's the word. Yeah. And it, it did go very well, but comparing it to other wheels that literally are plug and play, just put in the software, plug them in, you're done. This one, you had to do a couple extra steps. But beyond that, it was actually pretty easy for me. How about you? Now, I had some problems. Uh, I have an HP gaming laptop that I know isn't the optimum racing system, but I've been racing with it lately. My, my racing rig is, is a little dated, uh, so I've been racing on this dual-core laptop that I've got. And all the sims run on it. G25 ran on it at 5, that, that fine, that Ferrari F430 wheel we just reviewed. This, I don't know if it's the USB controller on that HP laptop or what. You know, eight laptops are built differently. Everything's compact in there. Even drivers for the video cards are different. Everything's different. So we thought it was dongle issues. You know, I was talking to Thomas, the CEO over at Fnatic, and he sent us some extra dongles to check just in case there was a, a, uh, a problem with, with the actual dongle. And the, the problem was actually the compatibility with my system. Every other system we've tried it on, uh, just standard desktop with normal USB, no problems, plug and play, pretty good. 
I'm gonna, I gave it a 70, Sean gave it an 80 in plug and playability. PS3 plugged right in, except for you had to get the flash, and that's not Fnatic's fault. Gran Turismo made some updates to the game uh, that, that the, the wheel was originally compatible with. They made updates, didn't include the Fnatic drivers, and Fnatic got left out in the cold, basically. So uh, it made it, it still worked, but there was issues with the shifter and stuff. But yeah, you can drive with the shifter and Gran Turismo and everything. So. Yeah. Next up, mounting and installation. Uh, here's what the clamp looks like by itself. Sean will give you a close-up of what it looks like uh, attached to the wheel. Um, definitely not a good clamp. Uh, not one of the best. I think the best clamp, two best clamps on the market are the Thrustmaster and the G25. G25 sticks like glue. The Thrustmaster, that thing will, that's got that little web clamp. That thing will stick to anything. My problem with this clamp is the back of the wheel pops up. Yeah, when you're running. Yeah, if you pull, the back of the wheel will just pop up. But, on the other hand, Sean and I, and we recommend this for any uh, diehard sim racer, we hard mount it. So what's cool about it is there's hard mounting uh, hardware threads in the bottom. And uh, with that, man, that thing is rock solid on there. Yeah, it doesn't budge. I, you know, honestly, I'd love for all wheels to just clamp on nicely. Very, very few do. Uh, or the ones you mentioned do it pretty well, but for years I, I gave up on the clamp mechanism. So even though it's something that's important to a lot of people, we grade it. You know, a long time ago, I am so grateful when they give me hard mounting locations that I can bolt into my sim pod and put it exactly where I want. I've been doing that for a long time. Yeah, and another the other thing about mounting and installation that Sean and I don't like. This is the mount for the shifter, and it basically there's two rods that go into the side of the wheel and you can adjust it. But the problem is, I mean, for the, especially for the six speed, the thing is, is still flopping all over the place and it causes the wheel to move. You got this, if you're using this clamp and this shifter, it's all over the place. But we've got a profile, we've got some profile tubing sim rigs now and we've hard mounted this stuff and it works. Now it works like a champ. Yeah. The six speed takes quite a bit of energy to get out into the outer gears too. So when you're using the stock mechanism, it, it creates a lot of torque on those rods and it's getting pretty flexy. So mounting and installation, and this is a little lengthy uh, review, but this is, you know, this wheel deserves it. This is, you know, G25, uh, you know, competition here. So we're gonna definitely, we put some more effort into uh, driving it. We did a lot of testing with it. So uh, mounting and installation, both of us gave it 80s. Next up, force feedback. Definitely a place where this wheel uh, is top notch. I'd say strongest force feedback, best feeling force feedback at that price point and below from you know, the Thrustmaster G25. Doesn't have that dead spot that the G25's known for. No. Um, man, this thing has such strong force feedback that you have to tone it down. I mean, there's no way you're running full on everything. It, it'll rip your arms off. And what's really amazing is not only is it really strong force feedback, at the same time, and I don't know how to explain this, it's gentle uh, or smooth. The way it delivers that force feedback, it's got all the tension in the world when you want it but it's not jerking it out of your hands. You're not feeling bumps and having it just kind of scissor the wheel around on well, you. Well, one of the things with the, I was like, you had your headphones on, you were driving with the G25 today, and I can just hear how notchy that, that gear drive is, and it's not, it's not like that with the belt drive, and you gotta get used to it. Uh, it's definitely a different feel, but yeah. once it is, like Sean said earlier, it's the most lifelike, it feels the most like a car that I've felt uh, at this price point. You know, we've driven the Frex wheel, the BRD, force feedback wheels, ECCIs, all those things, but. Uh, at this price point, it, it doesn't get better. Nope. Uh, for me, 95. 92 for me. Yep. Next category up is cost. Well, it's a new wheel. I mean, a lot of things start out at a price and trickle down, but right now we're looking at what, $299, $99, $300? Three something, yeah. It's actually maybe up to $350, right around that range. So it is a little pricier or the most expensive over-the-counter wheel that I can think of. And uh, But you do get a lot. You get both shifter options, paddle shifters, clutch. Very nice force feedback wheel, but it is expensive. Yeah. So for cost, I put it at a 80, You're 80 I'm 85. 80 and 85. And uh, last but not least is our last category, functionality. Functionality and probably the most important category, I would say. This thing comes, I mean, there is lap, not that I would ever drive this thing with the lap wings, <laughs> but uh, it, can, it comes with lap wings. It comes with this little, Mesh pad. Uh, it comes with, like we said, it comes with a drilling template. Drilling template, which I used. Yeah, I used it twice on two different rings. Rigs works awesome. Um, 
It comes with the extra dongle. It comes with a two shifter. It comes with a sequ sequential shifter that we, we, we didn't really mention. Best sequential shifter that yeah, I've tried. Yeah. It's just nice clicky buttons. Very positive. Don't miss shifts with it. Um, pedals clutch. has a clutch. Can't yep. beat that functionality. PS3. Yep. Yeah, it works on both your console and, and the, the PC. PS, yeah, and the PC. And, and it is that easy. We took it out there, hooked it up to one of our gaming chairs. We were running all the PC, uh, uh, PS3 games. It's brought just, it back in. Yeah, it's just about binding, like we mentioned. We tried them on all. Ferrari Challenge, yeah. uh, Gran Turismo, uh, all the all the driving games, Grid, yeah. and it worked great on all of them. So 95 for both of us. 95 on, for me too. On functionality, uh, which uh, leads us to our overalls. So uh, what do you got there for your overall? I had an 85, and I was at an 87.125. Yeah, and you know what really hit? They took a hit was a 70 in plug and play for me, uh, but. Uh, you know, it's funny, we compared the overall scores to uh, the, Sean and I were talking right before we started shooting here. Uh, which wheel would you take? You know, this or the, or the Ferrari wheel? And Sean's like, well, I'd take this wheel. I said, well, overall, you scored it lower, and, and so did I. But you know what? It, it took a little bit of hit in cost because that Ferrari wheel is only going to be about 150 bucks, so mm -hmm. it's half the price, and it's still a great competitive wheel. Yeah, and um, the, mount, the mount on the Ferrari wheel was a little more thought out. Yeah, the it. plug and play ability, but... Sean said he'd rather race with the Porsche wheel, yeah. and so would I. Yeah. And 900 honest, degrees of rotation, it's got the clutch, you know, stronger force feedback, that grip on that wheel is just, it's unbeatable. I, you know, there's paddle options. You can buy uh, these Club Sport paddles that make it more like a G25 paddle. Uh, so, definitely a good wheel, definitely great wheel. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely recommend it. I'm not too fond of the, the uh, USB or the... Uh, Wireless. The, the dongle, <laughs> but... Um, you know that new that new GT3 RS wheel that they're coming out with looks awesome. With the Club Sport pedals, is going to be uh, wired. So uh, let me let me just a few final thoughts that I have about this wheel. I have it in my sim rig. I am not planning on taking it out right now, so this is going to be in there for a while, even though our test is done. But I, I'm having fun. Uh, I actually might have slowed down the way I drive a little bit, not in terms of lap time, but the way I steer. Uh, the wheel is bigger. It's an inch larger. It's a little thicker around. I'm not gonna say it's slower, but just something about it makes me drive a little bit smoother. It took a little bit of getting used to, but now I'm watching myself and I just feel a little more confident. I take more time learning the track and I think it's just made me a little bit more precise than the G25. On the flip side though, the G25 is a very quick wheel. So depending on the track I'm at or if I'm overcorrecting a lot, maybe I overcorrect a little bit better with the G25, but I'm smoother with this wheel. So that's, that's one of the big thoughts that I have. Um, I also find that with, I don't overgrip the wheel because of that bigger diameter, I am not just given that gorilla death grip on it. So that's something that kind of works well for me as well. So, I mean, those are kind of my final thoughts. Yeah, on and, and mine are, uh, one of our comparisons, I was telling uh, Thomas at Fanatic, we were, we were telling we were gonna do a review today, and I, I told them, one of the comparisons we, we make is Sean and I on the track, and we went out yesterday and I racing, and we're usually within a tenth of a second, believe it or not, everywhere. Everywhere. No matter where we run, as soon as we get warmed up at a track, we're within a tenth of a second of each other all the time. And so our my our benchmark was, is Sean gonna be able to run, I'm, I'm running on the G25 on my rig right now, is Sean gonna be able to run as close to me? Sean was actually faster than me, he outqualified me uh, in the skippy that night, so. He got me in the end, but. Yeah, I ended up, yeah, but still, <laughs> he, he, was, he was quicker, so it didn't, it definitely did not hurt him. So, that being said, Fanatic Porsche wheel. You can go to uh, www.fanatic.com. Actually, we're going to be uh, we're going to have uh, an affiliate program here on our site, Inside SimRacing.tv, coming up pretty soon, where you'll be able to purchase these wheels right from our site, and uh, you can help us out if you're interested in one of these. We get a little uh, commission on these. Yeah. We definitely recommend them. Uh, again, uh, the only problem is that wireless deal, but uh, definitely a stout wheel, and, and we recommend it. Anything else, Sean? Before we go? No, no. All right. For uh, Sean Cole, Darren Ganji for Inside Sim Racing, we'll see you guys later.